man. Hello. Whoa. This is Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> Athena and she's we're... trying to regroup from my yelling. Yeah, yeah. And we got Amy. Holy tamale, yeah, Amy's here. Yeah, so we're here for part. I keep raising two my with voice, Amy. making it a little louder. <laughs> we're here for part two with Amy, and she is the HR director for BAC Transportation. And I can tell you that one of the things that I want to hit on is some of the secret sauce that you figured out to find team members and keep the employee pipeline going for um, new applicants and uh, and then some of the like exciting things that are going on in your department for BAC that is you're currently doing or that you're like aspiring to have your 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 goals towards so well, thanks away. for having me um, well I don't know if there's any secret sauce necessarily but one of the sauce. things that when we overhauled our interview process and our onboarding uh, is that we wanted to find people that had the qualities of the raise up mindset and we can teach just about everything around here we can teach how to drive safely how to open a door how to pick up crew how to run a sprayer you know how to push a wheelchair but to teach the seven qualities of the raise up mindset it takes a lot more effort and so we really focus on who they are as a person, and, uh, and and if they're teachable, which is of course a part of that whole process, then then we can teach them how to do those different things. Now, don't get me wrong; we have to make sure that safety is you know there the utmost, especially from our driving department, things like that. We have to make sure that they know how to type if they're going to be in our CSA department. So they Hot have to have isn't skills. Gonna get, like, yeah, they still have to have some skills, but. Uh, they what we're really looking for are people that really fit into the team and to be a part of, of the heart of this company and I would say that that resonates with me because I my goal is that every decision that we make gets dropped into that filter of raise up and and we make the decision based on that it's not okay well we need to get point A to point B it's like yeah well on your way to point A to point B, is, is this sending the message that we want to send to the community and to the people that are watching us uh, that potentially might want to work for us? Right. So I think another strategy that we really nailed down was spending the money to explain the culture on social media and the intention behind that. So you want to speak about that a little bit? Being part of that brand ambassador of culture in the company is honestly one of the things that I take so much pride in. And I sometimes even get a little choked up when we start to talk about it because how many companies take those seven core values that we have or whatever their core values are and make them an everyday practice? I remember when I first came on the management team and I was all excited, let's do this, let's do this. And Athena would be like, well, what part of Raise Up does it match with? How is that going to serve the team? How is it going to serve where we're going? And it makes everything very intentional as you get to think about that. It's, and you get clear. It is. And you're like, oh, well, it doesn't really. It was a really great idea and great energy, but let's find out what's going to serve the team or serve you know this project that we're working on. And and I just I just love that intentionality. Uh, but one of the things that I am really excited about where we're going is the you and raise up, and that is the understanding piece. Every time I work with training, I make sure, like, do you understand why I'm teaching you this? How it fits in with the purpose of this position or this job or, or this duty or whatever it is? And then do you understand what you're supposed to be doing in the end? And that's really what training is. And when you take the time to do all those pieces with everybody, they're like, well, they care about me. They really want to keep me and I'm going to stick with the company. And I, I just I think that is really the basis to retention is when people truly understand why they're doing it, how it serves the purpose, and that they really get to learn something. They're gonna want to stay. Nobody wants to like halfway do something. I don't think, uh, and, and just and, and just flit off. Yeah. So if they don't feel like they're being useful, you know, I've left several committees lately because I'm like I'm not useful on that committee anymore. So if I'm not going to be useful to the mission of what this is or to my personal mission, right. then I'm not going to stay. And people are, are doing that a lot, especially post-COVID. We're seeing that so much more. 
and uh, and retention is really important to us because that labor market has shrunk so much. Well, and they, you know, one of the things I think we really looked at is during COVID times, we were really lucky to keep our staff and we were able to really, we grew our staff from that time. That was one of the real intentionalities. It's like they were so thankful because so many people were getting laid off. And then um, as we started bringing on more contracts and doing more work, we really seemed like our, our labor pool was a lot smaller because there was a lot of people who were nervous. And then we, we got some people that probably were not in the right seat at the time. And we, we recognize that. And I think that we've been a, doing a good job for that the last year and a half is just really recognizing really who's in the right the seats. Deck. Shuffling the deck and read looking at that and just saying, hey, you know, we don't have to have this person here. We're not looking to fill a seat now. We're really looking for intentionality of who we want to hire and who's going to be the right team member. So as we've just brought on a new general manager, things that we've been looking for years to fill that right seat for the right person. It's just like, it, it's not, we just didn't fill it to fill it to make sure that we had a position filled. We're, I think we're a lot more intentional and I think Amy knows where we're going and where we want to be and how it's been. And so, you know, getting some of these, I'd say, I wouldn't say better hires, just more qualified, more people that have the same values that we're looking at. We're getting those people coming in now and it's it's just really making a huge difference in the, the culture of the company. And yes. people want to come here now. So we have these excellent prospects that are coming in now and really hopefully to bring the rest of the team up too. And it's a, it's a constant struggle. It's just like a marriage. It's just like it's always a lot of work. It's uh, because you have so many people that have ups and downs, and you know. And I know that the HR is the uh, we call it the cheerleaders of the uh, of the company of the company because they're always trying to cheerlead it. And sometimes you know you're just sometimes that's what some people need. Right. It's uh, it's really great to be in a place too where. Um, you can envision something, bring it to leadership, and they're like, let's do it. And about six months ago, I came to Athena and I said, I really want to take training to a whole nother level. I'm totally bogged down on the compliance side, the paperwork side, the audit side, and all these different things that have to happen all the time. But I really, I really see this as a vision. And she goes, okay, make a plan, make it happen. So I did. And uh, about two and a half months ago, she called me and said, hey, you know that three-year plan? We're moving it up and we're going to backfill we're going to do this we're going to do this and and i've just been on fire since then because i love love educating people i love connecting people i love inspiring people and this is just i get to do everything that i want to do uh here in the company and i'm just super excited about it so we're taking every individual aspect of the company and elevating it to a higher frequency um, through training and what the hardest thing for me is how to prioritize everything because I'm just I'm getting so excited like about everything store. and it's like all, all these different things that we get to do and so really looking at prioritizing um, each one of those things but what's even better is that the management uh, in the other areas are getting excited about it Chelsea out at the airport like she's like oh, I really want to get this up and I want to get this running and she's like she goes I want to get this time on your schedule to go over this and to do this and to create this and we're ready to do some voiceovers for some trainings that she and I have been working on, and and I'm just I'm super excited that they're that they're getting the same fire that I am because this is going to keep the teams there. Um, I mean, Chelsea has not been in a state of um, hiring um, for quite a while now because her team loves her and her team is 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 pretty well set over there, and she hasn't had any openings on the job board for a while, and and it shows because. And they, that they has, love being there. That is a big deal because yeah. her her employment pool is teenager to. Uh, I mean, if you can if you can do the duties of the job, it, it, the age goes all the way to the top, wherever that is. So. Yeah. That's a big deal. You know, trying to find people to serve too and do that stuff at the airport is, <clears throat> is a little bit more there. And you know, there were sicknesses and illnesses and things that came there. So I think there was a little caution about being at the airport. But again, we are now filling these positions with solid, solid, solid people and that we are, you know, getting our good core group down there. We have three people that have been here since the beginning of the contracts. Don't yeah. We? Yeah. Right, from the Ephes very, very beginning. They, they lasted from the beginning through the ups and downs of creating a brand new department, through a new mm -hmm. contract, through COVID. Uh, so, and they've been with us the entire time. So it's pretty exciting to see that department out there. And we stay pretty even with numbers between and the ambassadors and the drivers. They usually stay within five of each other. Interesting. So it is um, it is interesting when we were breaking things down. Uh, actually, last year at Christmas time, we were breaking things down for, for a couple different things. And, and we noticed that, that they stay within five of each other at all times, pretty much. 
So it's pretty, it's pretty exciting that we have that many people out at the airport that are serving 24 hours a day uh, to all the passengers for Alaska Airlines, as well as we have all of our folks that are on the road. So I want to get back to that question, though, because I want to give people some solid ideas if they sure. haven't, haven't come up with it on their own yet. The, the other piece about the social media, what does that look like? Uh, how do you support what, what our company looks like to the community and beyond online? Well, social media is really important because we have to portray several different uh, personas on there. We have to portray this, this fabulous luxury you know, that we offer, this, this service that we offer, um, as well as this great environment that anybody could be a part of if they want to be a part of it and to grow here with the team. And so that's always a balancing act there. Uh, one of the things that we, that my team and I have been discussing is reactivating our Facebook group and reinvigorating it with some different ideas. Uh, one of our HR assistants, Audra, uh, she and I are working together with some different photo contests to be able to drive some content that way because uh, we all see uh, different things that people are posting on their personal pages and we're trying to get that um, into into their, our group and get some, some excitement in there as well too. So you're planning on uh, reinvigorating, we used to like have like a staff Facebook group. It's still there, it just is pretty stagnant. There's not really a lot of activity. So we're gonna start driving some um, notices and some traffic through there as well too. Uh, because it's a closed group, we can put up you know RSVPs for parties and things like that, like all that type of traffic that can be in there. Uh, but we want to to be able to start to pull that together, um, you know, highlights for meeting notes and all that kind of stuff. We just want people to start thinking that as another resource. channel because mm -hmm. we have a lot of channels that we communicate on. What specifically that I know that your department is managing on on that online culture piece is you're making sure that what the marketing team is putting out there is actually relevant for the current team that we right. have. And so you're kind of like that last stop of they send you what they're posting for the week and you look at that and go, okay, that person's in uniform, that person's got this, that person works for us still. Right. And, and those are intentional pieces that really play a critical mm -hmm. role in, in how we're viewed out there on the world. Very intentional. I want to make sure that it's not just a trend that we're following, that it is that is accurate. And I very much protect the brand of BAC and AMT very much and want to make sure that what we're putting out there, uh, Charlie and Athena are proud, you know, that they have their name on things, but also that we're representing correctly. You know, um, the last thing I want somebody to do is to see a, an ambassador in jeans or in a hoodie or something like they're not in uniform. And, um, and they're like, oh, well, if I come to work there, I can wear jeans. No, sorry, that's not what we do. Or to see vehicles that aren't clean or whatever. So I wanna make sure that everything is, is up to our high standards because at, we all know that once it's on the internet, it's always on the internet. Charlie, you made a post almost two years ago my friend, and it is still the top post. Oh yes, the AMT post. At pops. least every quarter that pops back up. It's reinvigorated. And it does, it gets reinvigorated. I'm like, it can never make it go away. And it's this big, cheesy, awesome Charlie grin with all his Charlie energy. And he's got his, his, his radio we'll on. We'll make sure there's a clip. And he's like, he's like, you know, this is a great day basically. And, and, and it just gets, it gets pulled back People up. People love that picture. And so it doesn't matter what's out there. Yeah. It that's will, the one that says, back I'd love to work for this guy. Look at the energy there. Yes. Something like that. You saw that. Yeah. That yeah. was just a, that, no, was that was who just you like, are, though. yeah, that's, 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 that's totally just, yeah. yeah. And that's, and I think we get a lot of different hits on those ones. I was just looking at, I was showing Athena the other day, just the, the new reevaluation of the AMT post with uh, Pat and those guys teaching class. Mm -hmm. It's at 44,000 people now. So there's people that want to watch it and see what's kind of going on. And it's like, you know, it's like, it's like watching the Joneses sometimes like, you know, it might not be in their pool, but they, they stock that in their card catalog. So they know that, Hey, we're doing ambulance service. We're doing wheelchairs. We're doing this yeah. stuff. And then we get called about it on the craziest times to get somebody that calls us and says, Hey, I see you guys are doing this ambulance service. You know, I got this elderly person, you know, what would we look like? So, yeah. The social media is a piece of training because we are training our applicants, what our expectations are. We're training our future team members what we're going to expect and what, it, we're, what is out there. We're training our customers. So social media is just so 
at the center of everything that we do in life. Doesn't matter if you're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, threads, it doesn't matter what you're on. What is out there is what people are going to think about your company. And um, so we're, I mean, that's just a piece of training. It's a piece of reality. Well, I think it's the modern day TV channels now. You yeah. know, those are, it's not MTV. It's not all these other ones now. It's not CMT. It's everybody's looking at these as their channels of what they're getting for, they want to get fed. Yeah. So we're trying to feed into that too. And there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of small stuff. There's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of crazy stuff. So we try it's to get true. in in the middle. It's yeah. true. And I think uh, during COVID that, that was, we did a thing called Raise Up Tuesdays where it was more about engaging the team. And of course our listeners are going to be everybody that finds us or subscribes to our YouTube channel or whatever. But um, just like these podcasts, these aren't just for the, I mean, the yes, the aspiring entrepreneur is one of the demographics that we're hitting. The actual, the person who's in the thick of their entrepreneurial journey is another one, but also our team members listen to this and potential team members listen to this. And we're really aware of that. And that's part of the authenticity that Charlie and I want to maintain in these podcasts because we're, we know everybody is, um, th there could be any one of the demographic that's checking in on us. You know, just listening to some of our friends, I was uh, talking to a couple of friends that are back in the day and we were, we were showing some pictures back and forth and they said, and you guys have a podcast too. And, and she's like, what do you mean he has a podcast? And there's this conversation going between the other people. And then when we were just going to the champagne pops the other day, uh, Matt Fignani uh, said, Hey, I, I saw a clip of your podcast the other day and that's really kind of cool. And then all of a sudden it started up the whole thing up. I love podcasts. What is it? You know? So it, it's like, it's, it's catching on fire now. There's more and more people that are getting onto it and looking at it and just, Kind of wondering because everybody wants to know a story. You know, I we like to hear stories just as we go to different places and see how their business has started. And I think I mentioned Chick Fil A, but we've been to many Google, we've been to, to Yahoo's, businesses. and and just seeing where they started and where they're at now. And it's it's impressive because everybody has a story, and and some stories are so compelling. so parallel, they're compelling, and then you have some ones that are just like, wow, how did they how did they start from that to that? Bucky's, <laughs> love my Bucky's. You know, Bucky's. That's a, <laughs> biggest gas station in the world. I mean, that, that these places just kill it and it's a destination, you know, and who would have thought Chevron or Ma Holiday or Mapco would have ever been a destination place, but Bucky's had a vision and they made the vision yeah. correct. And you go in there and holy tamale, you're out $2,000 after you walk out and you're like, hell, I just got, just got, just got Bucky'd. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think our version up here is Costco. Do you got Costco? Yeah, Costco. Yeah, but shoot, I mean, shoot, everybody loves it. You run into everybody on a Saturday or Sunday at Costco. It's over forty-five. That's their. I that's can't their weekend take hangout. him to Costco on the weekends because we never get anywhere. Don't even go there. I have to go Bullshit. shop. Let me let me without tell you so, him. She's like, let's go down all these aisles. I'm like, we're here for four things. What are we doing down all these aisles? I might hit some highlights and see what they might have for maybe some socks or something like that. And she's looking at bit, you know, all of our rental properties. I'm like, yeah, I'm this always is like horrible. Looking for so she's like, do you want to go to Costco with me? I'm like, no, not at all. I'll meet you there. And then she, it doesn't matter if I don't go because she'll buy something that can't fit in her car and she'll ask me to come pick it up. So <laughs> I'm screwed either way. So I'm just letting you know. That's well, awesome. when we go though, you like, you'll see so-and-so and then you'll talk here and then you'll be this. And we'll be like, like 17 feet in the door and, and we're still like, there's times I remember. That's in our new gala. What are you talking about? That's our new galas that we go to. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> That could we be. get out cheaper there than we do the gala. <laughs> That's true. That's the connections, I mean, those are where you make the connections, yeah. right? And you talk to somebody and they're like, yeah, yeah, what's up? Oh, not much. Just getting this food for over here. And then Bobby's eating me at a house and home because he's not working anymore. Oh, well, you know what? Is he looking for a job? What does he like to do? You know what? We've got some positions open in our detail shop. Oh, that'd be great. And that's how it happens. True. Sure. And so... If, if you go home at the end of the night and you and you just hibernate at the end of your day and you don't go and you don't connect and you don't serve in the community in other way uh, and you don't go into these other organizations um, that you belong to, then you don't have these connections and you can't help somebody like we talked on our last episode about helping them. Uh, you know, with an immigration issue and we can't, you know, help somebody with, you know, with a, a leasing option or whatever. We can't help people with all these different things if we don't have any connections. That's true. So this is just, it's a, just a piece of everything that we need to do and to be a part. 
uh, of the community. And I think that that's something that, uh, that this company does so, so well. And of course, your enthusiasm, Charlie, takes us <laughs> through it all. Uh, I know good that... days, good days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> little, little most energy of the today. days are good. Yeah. And I would say that you're, you have the, like, there's the connector piece is definitely your superpower. I have said that before on the podcast, but then the other piece is lifting the energy and um, making it a little more fun, especially these days. And so it is, it's, it's not just where we work. It's not just who we work with. It's our life. Hmm. And we have to make some intentional decisions about where our life is going, how our life is being lived. Is it something that we really want? Well, we figured out, the three of us especially, that we get to choose. Yeah. We get to choose who we hang out with every single day. And, um, and really, so does everyone else. They just don't know it. I think it's sort of intentionality as, you know, we're talking about our, our property and stuff. We call it a campus. We talk our employees as associates, things like that. We talk to them in a different way sometimes of who they are and what they do. Um, our drivers are not drivers or chauffeurs, you know? I mean, you just look at that more intentionality of what their positions are and what they can do. And it just, it seems like, it seems like more like, you know, when you talk about a campus, a campus is like a, a place where people work or they go to school or they do something. This is our, they this is our campus, you know, it's, yeah. it's almost Learn two and a half there, acres. But... Yeah. So they have an intentionality of that. They feel like they're part of a, a group or a, a team or something like that. And we just want them to understand that that's part of where we're at. And you know, that we have open doors up here, but don't crash our door on everything, you know, talk to us about what you need to talk to us, but don't, don't, you know, just come and interrupt everything because it's something super important and get some scheduled time. And, you know, yeah. we, we saw that with some employees yesterday that wanted to crash our schedule and talk some time and we just reset their times up for them and gave them their time. So it, it's the intentionality, I think, behind what we're doing. Well, I mean, you mentioned that and one of the things that HR has done now is each one of us has our own Calendly account and there is a photo of us what we do and a link and our phone number um, on our HR page. And so do you need an IT appointment? You click here and you go to straight to Buster's calendar. You click here if you need um, some HR support, you get Haley's calendar. You click here and you get my calendar if you need, you know, these other things. And what's been nice about that is we tell people, and it was hard in the beginning because everybody wanted to crash a door. And we would say, you know what? I appreciate you and you're important to me but I need to take time to spend with you. And right now I got have to get this other thing done. So if you can make an appointment or come back at two o'clock, I will have time to one-on-one -on -one spend time with you. Close that door. It's just us. And people feel loved and they feel appreciated and seen when you do that. And we finally don't have as many people crashing our door anymore, which is really, really nice because we can be more intentional with them, but also more intentional with those other things that we need to get done as well. And it's a great example of communicating that you want to be able to assist them. However, you've got this other thing because their need was unexpected. And so it has nothing to do with, I don't want to help you or you're not important to me, but it's demonst so that they can now experience that from you and then go back to their family member or their friend who is upset because they're not giving them the time or you don't care about me or whatever. So it's like this bigger picture of how can we step forward in demonstrating re really to communicate effectively and also show them that they are important. So. Right. Because here in, in um, referring back to our, our GOAT goals, our daily goals here, um, the great customer service, you know, our, our customers are primarily the team members that are here. And yes, we have external customers, state of Alaska calls in or whatever, but the, our customers are those team members that are here and we want to serve them, but we also need to serve them at a specific time. Just like we pick up, you know, crews at a specific time or we have a, a push at a specific time. Like it, it, that's your time where I can serve you at, the, my, at my utmost capabilities. And so um, it's just really important that we approach it from that aspect. Yes. And Amy, I wanted you, now that we're getting towards the end of our broadcast for this episode, can you tell people, like, what are some of the positions that we have available right now, and then also where they can find our application and maybe learn more about those positions? Sure. Um, so BACjobs.com is the best place to go to see whatever is open right now. 
Uh, we have a couple perpetual positions that may not be filling right at the moment because we might be full, but we want to keep the pipeline uh, full with prospects. And so uh, some of those are on there, but there is a notice that says that we're not actively hiring right now, but please add yourself to the wait list. Uh, but in our operations department... I just got to say something. It is so awesome that we have a wait list for positions. Thank sure. you very much. Okay, <laughs> now keep going, keep yes. going. So um, in our operations department, that's where um, our, our biggest amount of positions are always going to be at uh, because that covers our driver pool and then our fleet shop. And, and then um, of course our CSAs and our dispatch are super important in our airport. And so we've got positions that are available in all of those different departments. And we're always looking for new leaders. If there is a leader that is out there that is like, you know, they're, they're being put in front of us um, to be able to help to lead the department. We're always looking for good leaders. So those, those positions are there. Um, on the AMT side, um, we um, have really been blessed to have the pipeline open for quite a while where we could take EMT ones, and, um, especially wanting to get into the industry and learning things. Right now we're full on that area, but we are looking for some skilled paramedics, especially um, you know, on-call paramedics right now. So um, fill call outs, things like that, yes. that are, I mean, flexible, especially for those team members that are working uh, on another Kelly schedule and they've got extra time. So. Right. Well, and, and one then, thing we have to look at too, I'm sorry, you mean the no, paramedic fine. side is that um, we're always trying to promote our paramedics. You know, we're a PAS, private ambulance service. So some of the people want to get in the 911 field. So we're very privileged that we have a couple of people that are yeah. applying for some uh, other positions throughout the Muni and so out through Matsu too. So we might have some positions coming up for EMT3s and paramedics that are coming up soon. We're encouraging those people that if they get the positions that they definitely want to go into their lives. So, um, so it's always a good pipeline for us also to, if you're looking to get an Anchorage Fire Department, Fairbanks, Matsu, things like this. You get lots of patient care, things like that too. So it's a good pipeline and we're always uh, happy to get those people through there too to get to their next uh, level where they want to go to in their life. Yeah, and but, I think that if you haven't figured it out by now is that we're, we're not just, of course we want people to stay and to feel the environment that we have, but we really, we understand that the, the team members of today they're really looking to learn some solid things over a period of maybe a few years. And then they're moving on to their next like thing that they've discovered lights their fire. And so it's not so much of a, well, we're only looking for people that are gonna stay with us for 10 years because we, we know that even for ourselves, that the person that we were 10 years ago is not the person that we are today. We grow, we learn, we discover things about ourselves. And so this is really like a, a, it's like a safe place to figure out who you are, align with our core values while you're here, and really discover that for yourself. And the so fun we, thing about that, I'm sorry, even no, more thing too. The one thing fun about that is they leave and they tell other people what happened in their journey here, and then they recommend other people to yes. it. So it's it's a it's full. So sorry, go ahead. So um, well, two pieces. Um, one is there's two really fun quick stories about that. One of them is we had somebody who started out here as an EMT, and um, ended up deciding he wanted to go to paramedic school, came back thought he wanted to go do something big and great and over here and then ended up coming back around and becoming a supervisor and coming back to us. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that, that gentleman has come, you know, three different turns and back to us and we're super excited. So again, another place where you can grow and move, um, with the different transitions of your life. And then we had another young man that was started out with us out at the airport and, uh, Chelsea had mentioned, Hey, did you know so-and-so has their EMT? And I was like, no, and uh, they weren't quite 21 yet. And because um, something I'll mention in a moment, you have to be 21 here. And so he, anyway, he um, you know, turned 21 and said, has Chelsea said that I could, I could probably apply? And now he's just a phenomenal member of our team, super excited. He took our EMT2 class, so he's now an EMT2. And, uh, and you know, that's another thing too, you know, we talked about training in the beginning of this episode and the training is not just training for onboarding or training how to do this, that, the other. It's also continued education, especially on the AMT side. We have a very robust training program that not only does weekly trainings, but also has trainings 
um, between EMT 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 as well too. Um, and we're looking at doing some advanced classes for some advanced certifications um, coming up in the future. So I'm super excited about all the training that goes on there as well too. Uh, but one of the things that's unique about us as a PAS is that um, everybody is an EMT, is a provider, but they're also an ambulance driver. And I didn't think that was a big deal because I didn't come from that world. But as I'm talking to folks, they're like, really, we get to learn how to drive an ambulance? Because nobody else, to my knowledge, is doing this. Um, mm -hmm. At least that, that's what I'm getting from our applicants. And so they're just so excited. They're like, I get to learn that. I'm like, get to learn it. Everybody's got to do it. And so, that's a requirement here is that you need so, to learn how to drive the car. And so that's why you have to be 21 is because that's what our insurance shows. Um, but the... Good driving record, no criminal background. You know, good oh, yeah. You know, history. that's one of the safety layers that being connected to BAC has really brought to AMT is that we have this clear understanding about what it takes to transport passengers safely. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's just a whole nother level up because... Our focus is customer care, absolutely, but it takes it on to the realm of, are you being safe while you're driving the vehicle? Are you doing best practices for, for passenger transportation in general? So, yeah. yeah. So just so much training on that medical side um, over there and, and all the different things we have going there. And then, uh, of course, then in HR, um, it's funny, you know, three years ago, I was a department of one, and uh, now I have this great robust department, and I'm like, hey, let's do this. And, and of course, leadership was like, yes, let's do it. And so we've, we've built um, quite a significant department here to be able to serve everybody um, at the base team level, um, all the way up, you know, through different uh, pieces um, of the company and now expanding again into um, more media pieces and looking forward to having a multimedia person come on board and somebody to help us to focus on um, on a whole bunch of different um, outreaches and different marketing in different areas. So I'm looking forward to bringing that piece on as well too as we continue in this podcast format, continuing our training formats and, and how that is expanding. And so, and so what that means is that uh, what Amy is basically saying is that we're looking for somebody who is interested in helping curate some of these trainings that we want to level up. And that can look like a bunch of different things, but it absolutely has to start with somebody who has some awareness of operating cameras and, um, and being able to help curate some of the training material. And I think we're really looking for like somebody who's experienced in video because yeah. we want to be able to offer the team members a video with transcription in their language and just like take our training to the next level so that we know that we know that we know that we set them up for absolute success and that, that they're not just set aside as, oh, well, they just don't get it. Right. Sure. We're working the puzzle every, 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 t every time. So lots of different, uh, lots of different things that we do around here, and we truly are a team here. We're a family. I think the only place you see the word employee is um, inside of some of our software. There's like an employee number, or whatever, uh, <laughs> because everybody here is part of the team. It's a very symbiotic relationship, yeah. and we we want to help to serve um, our team members, but we also need our team members to serve our customers, and so we really try hard to take care of each other in that in that relationship. Yeah, and. Thank you, Amy, for everything that you do, yes. for every aspect that you bring clarity to to function, operations, and deliverables, and, and everything. HR is really at the cornerstone of everything that we do here. So thank you for that. It's an honor to be here. That was BACjobs.com. Yep. If you're interested or you know somebody who's looking, and then of course, check us out on raiseupmindset.com if you wanna see some more of these great episodes. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast, 
click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again. Bye-bye.